Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's my portfolio review video and I want to address three key points before we start. I think the first one is what problem am I addressing with this video? It's very difficult to manage a stock portfolio over a long period of time. So I'm trying to demonstrate my attempts to do that and hopefully you will find that useful. Also from my perspective it keeps me honest as I have to think about every move that I make because I'm sharing them transparently with you the audience. One of the key things in investing is to build a strategy. Then one thing is building and designing it. The other is to actually execute it with discipline over a long period of time. I think these videos can be valuable to you to give you some ideas around how to do that and how not to do that. And also perhaps some companies to invest in. Although, of course, none of this is financial personal advice to you. So what am I? So I am a long term investor. I want to get rich slowly. And that's the opposite of what people generally want to do. I think that's a much safer way to do it. You can get rich quickly, but you're not going to do that with me. So I'm not get rich quick. I'm not sort of pump stocks. I'm not crypto. This is the sort of relatively steady, long-term compounding, how to run a portfolio. So with that out of the way, let's roll the intro. So for today's portfolio update, which covers March, so we're at the start of April, these are the five areas I'm going to cover. So we'll start with the value of the portfolio. Now, as a reminder, I like to compare month to month so to give you an idea of what's happened in the month. So start of March, I was almost at 43,000 in the portfolio. This is now about 41,500. I've added my usual minimum 300 pound monthly deposit. So the performance of the portfolio or rather the market view with the value of the companies in my portfolio has dropped by about £1,700 in month. Not overly surprising given the, the various banking issues in crisis, risk, fear that was in the market. So it, it's down. I'm not worried that it's down. It has given me a couple of buy opportunities on some of my companies. So stay tuned to see some of the positions that I've added to. Overall, uh, I'm only £300 or so behind the year-end kind of minimum target I really do want to be pushing that stretch target. Now, given where we are in the year, I've got nine more deposits of 300, so 2,700. That would take us to around about 44,000 or so. So I do need 2,000 pounds of performance improvement between now and the end of the year, in addition to those minimum deposits in order to hit the stretch target, i.e. the 10% a year um, run rate. So speaking of run rate, where does that leave me? It means for the base target, sort of the really slow way, 6.53% uh, a year I need to get. But I really want to hit that stretch target by 2050. So I'm going to need 9.69% a year. That's gone up by 0.14 percentage points since last month. So I am still below that 10% run rate. So I've made some positive progress. I'm slightly ahead of that schedule, of that rate. It is, it is still re you know relatively close. So a couple of bad months push it towards 10%. But that is the goal here. 2050, one million pounds, nice and steady and slow, try not to lose my face. Uh, almost like win by not losing is what I'm trying to do here. And to that end, I have made some changes, improvements to the portfolio over the month. Before we touch on those, um, some dividends. So 40 pounds in dividends and City of London Investment Group, 11 pounds, which is nice. That's been a very good dividend stock for me. And Walgreens, uh, I did sell Walgreens uh, last month, or rather in February. So this was uh, after the ex-dividend date. So I got the £10 there, and that will be the end of Walgreens in my portfolio. And you'll see there Unilever on my long-term holds. And my first dividend, I think, from Skyworks Solutions of around about £1.50. So relatively quiet on dividends. Now here are the sales in the portfolio. Now, GAN, I've just sold out of. And the results came out. Not very impressed with them. Uh, essentially, they diversified. I should have seen it earlier. I think they were focused on sort of B2B platforms. They bought, if memory serves, um, a B2C platform. I think it was called Coolbet. 
they've pretty much written that off now. They spent a lot of money on it and it's not really doing much for their results. They've diversified. Uh, management doesn't really know what they're doing. So they're doing a quote strategic review. Not impressed. And I actually kind of forced myself on my whiteboard in my office here to write down in order if I wanted to get down to 20 stocks. I, I want to operate with no more than 25. So I want to be in that 20 to 25 range. I'm still quite away away from that. I used to have 50. I think I'm down at about 38 now. So I've made progress, but I need to make more progress. And GAN was the first one to force myself to up and down that I would sell in order of what I want to get rid of. And based on those results, there's just no point holding that company. Um, so it's just destroying my value, destroying my money. So I've sold it in full. And the other is K3 Capital. Now, K3 Capital, fantastic company, um, but they were bought out. So this was um, very much at the start of the month. Yeah, so that extra fifty pounds came through, and yeah, nothing I can do about that. It's been bought out. That added quite a lot to my cash position, another two percent in the portfolio. And I bought part of that company in October twenty twenty, and another part in February twenty twenty one. So the profit overall was getting on four hundred pounds, which is a really good profit on a in that period of time, and on a compound annual growth rate that's twenty nine percent a year. So it's been a great company for me, one of my best purchases. I would have wanted to hold it longer, but it's been bought out, made a good profit, let's move on. Now, of course, all of this increased my cash position. And one of the things I'm trying to be a lot better on this year, um, and I think I have been in maybe the last six months, maybe even up to nine, is discipline of purchases. And I don't want to be adding lots of new positions to the portfolio. I want to be looking at things at a portfolio level and against the run rate, which I wasn't doing perhaps a couple of years ago. And this is why all of these purchases have been made and these are all existing holdings. So none of these buys are new additions to the portfolio. So you can see with the sales, see I've got two less holdings than I did a month ago. Now Fund Smith Equity, one of the best performing UK funds and probably the largest as well. Terry Smith, I think he's absolutely amazing. And as per my ongoing kind of adding, ongoing deposits that I've been doing over the last um, nine months or so, I've been adding around about £100 a month into Fundsmith Equity. So that has continued. And with this extra cash, you know, I don't want to be too much in cash because a lot of return comes from those best days in the market. And so I've added a little bit to the S&P 500 just to kind of use up some of that cash, if you will. That's quite a good place for money in the long term. Um, legal in general, I've actually added two slugs uh, in this month. So with the, the banking crisis, and that applies for three of these on the list, legal in general dropped quite a bit. It's one of my favourite companies. I'm happy to make it up to about 4% of my portfolio. So therefore, I've made those additions. I think adding about, well, probably about £700 to them in this month. And then Aviva, I've also added uh, half percent of my portfolio, so another £200 to that, as that dropped to around about £4. And then probably my favourite, or one of my favourite companies, Bank OZK, okay. that used to be getting towards 50. I bought my initial tranches three years ago in the 20 to 25 range. But it did drop off significantly in the month and it's an amazing company very risk averse very good management very good practices very good long-term compounder dividend i think was about four percent so i added in the 34 dollar range um, an additional a uh, couple of hundred pounds so half percent of my portfolio and again if it continues to drop i will add more to that position and then last but not least alibaba um, in the low 80s added a, another half percent my cash sorry half percent my portfolio worth of cash it's that uh, bring the average down but getting towards a full position in alibaba so that is the the buys i think they're all pretty good so this is the portfolio now you can see actually it's quite even between cash the quality companies dividend and the managed I've got some cyclicals now the cyclicals has gone up since last month because actually I've, I've looked at micron and intel and they're not actually really in that quality company bucket and the more i've looked at them in the last month or so the more i think they're actually cyclicals but those chip makers so i put them into that cyclicals box as a reminder of my overall strategy which hopefully will help you um, i want the quality part of the portfolio to be up to 50 percent the dividend part to be up to 25 percent and the managed part to protect against my ignorance and failure up to 25% as well. Um, so we're obviously not there at the moment. I'll, I'll take 0 to 10% in cyclicals if there are some opportunities. 
and then the unclassified they should all be sold in due course uh, and i'm getting through those because they don't fit into our strategy anymore they're companies that i have to own already you can see that cash position is too high but i'm not just going to rush in it needs to be things at the right properly at the right value and that fit the strategy so here is the quality part of the portfolio the bank is okay dropped 64 percentage points a month which was a great opportunity to add still the top of the list there some other notable changes in month google's performed pretty well up 12 points and adobe up 14 points um, they are investments that I would happily increase my position in where they are at the right entry point. Uh, Unilever sticks around that total return of 100%. And it's probably also worth saying that Inmode and America Express both down 15%. And Amex, again, one of my favourite companies, uh, as is Berkshire Hathaway. So we keep an eye on those. If they drop too much more to a certain strike point, then I'll be looking at them. If you want to know what my strike point is for various companies, then please consider joining our team, joining the group via the Patreon link where we've got a Discord server, and then you'll have access to what's on my shortlist, my analysis of the companies, and my strike prices for different entry points as to when I'm going to buy them. Now, of course, that's just my view, not financial advice, but I'd love to have you there so we can have a chat about it, come up with some good ideas. Udum portfolio. So my favourite company, one of my favourites, Udum down 31 points, all these insurance and bank companies got hit. You know, League and General down 25, Aviva down 14, Investor down 54. So those top four companies got ex or did have excellent total returns. They have been hammered with this banking crisis, um, as has US Bank up there sort of in the middle of the list. So it gave you those opportunities to add to some of those positions, as we have discussed. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that, that portfolio. I'm not worried about the drops there because these are good dividend companies. I expect the returns to continue and improve over time. One on the list I'm thinking about, uh, well, there's two on the list I'm thinking about. One is direct line, held that for a long period of time. I've sort of been losing 2% a year over a long period of time, which has got to be to that position. They're not as strong as some of the other companies on this list. As part of my portfolio simplification, they could be a target. And then there's the argument on 91, it's so small, what's the point in having it? So I'm, I'm thinking about that. Right on the manage, this is where if I go bad or something happens, this will keep my portfolio ticking over and I won't completely lose all my money because I think that's important. Not a huge amount of change in month really, only of these, all of them moved by less than 10 percentage points, as you'd expect, because in most cases they are uh, index trackers, apart from a couple of managed funds there at the top. What you will see there is Fundsmith climbing up the list, and I can see that uh, becoming my biggest position in this part of the portfolio it's just because i think the manager is excellent although one should be wary of star fund managers but i think his approach where he explains the approach very clear the track record is excellent and the way he invests and what he invests in i really like it i'll add more to that position pound cost average over time right unclassified so these don't fit my strategy anymore so in due course they will be sold um, but i'm not just going to sell them for the sake of it particularly such a large cash position I do think on most of these companies, I will make money apart from Voyager, which has gone bust. Alibaba, I think I will make a profit on it very easily. Just a case of patience. Uh, same with Corsair, they're a leader in their field. Um, so therefore, if they keep performing and delivering, then I should make some money there. S4 Capital got excellent management and they're growing very well. And that was actually in profit um, fairly recently. And I think it there's a potential of a doubling on this one. Cumulus is more of a cigar butt sort of thing. Um, not done so well recently. I need to keep an eye on that. Uh, and Tenant, you can see there, has been been falling uh, and it's been suffering from various lockdowns, what have you, they had in China. If things improve there, then that will definitely improve. Right, last but not least, the smallest part of the portfolio cyclical is £3,000. Coal Company AMR there, still over 300% return. Um, I think they are going to release some fantastic results on the next set because the price of Met Coal has been excellent. Uh, same for Ramico, although well, I think AMR is a bit of a better company. Our target to sell that is around about $200 a share on AMR, and they're in the $150 or so range at the moment. You might put an Intel in this portfolio now. And the other one is Turtle Beach, so it's just starting to recover a little bit. I was hoping for that takeover that's been talked about for a long time to go through. So that's another one that I'm 
potentially looking to divest myself of. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Please do share me below on what I've been up to last month, what your thoughts are on those changes to the portfolio. And there's a link coming up on screen now. Have a look. It could be a good investment idea for you. If you're looking to grow your portfolio, you can't afford to miss these great ideas.